Hey everybody, and welcome back to Trek Yards. He is Commander Cockings. He's kind of Foley. I'm kind of annoyed, honestly. I'm going to okay, be fair. We'll just, we'll jump straight into it. What do you think of episode three? Does it compare to the previous two? It sucked. Like the worst of Strange New Worlds so far. Um, but there's no way that they'd be talking to the Ferengi on the view screen at the beginning of the episode like that. They would not know who the Ferengi are. They even say the Ferengi Alliance, and it just annoyed the crap out of me. Um, Strange New Worlds, Stuart. What do you mean, Strange New Worlds this week? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Pike was talking to the Ferengi captain. The one in Canada. What are you talking about? Nothing. Canada about. Uh, um, I don't what, know. I, um, just gonna. Give me, give me one second, okay? Uh, sure. Hi, guys. I uh, get like. Uh, okay. Are we filming yet? Are you recording? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, crap safe. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Trek Yards, everybody. I'm Captain Foley. He is Commander Cockings. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah, yes, welcome back. So, Stuart, what do you think of season three episode? No, season two episode three. Stranger Worlds. For realsies. The one with Canada, yeah? Oh, Canada. Okay, my home and native land. Yes, the most Canadian episode of Star Trek ever. I absolutely love this one. Seeing all the downtown Toronto landmarks. The Royal Ontario Museum. Wow, it was awesome. The Eaton Center. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was great. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. So you're saying you could go and drive and meet Khan if you wanted to? Yeah, yeah. But good. We, we'll go. We'll do that next time you come over. Uh, so yeah, this is the time travel one, Stuart. Um, and and you know, 29th century shenanigans, or at least uh, esque-ish sort of. Um, left vague. They did mention 1992 as like, a few, like when Khan was supposed to establish power, which was great. Um, but then she said, you know, they've been delaying things and points with the, her gun to the Khan sign. Anyway, spoilers. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is this is a very us episode, Stuart. That's why we're kind of going strange. So, what do you think in general? How, how how do you review it compared to the ones? I loved it. I thought it was a great episode. Um, I did like all the Canadianness Canadianness of it. Maple leaves, politeness, and poutine, as she says. And um, so I, I thought it was fun. I thought the way they tied in uh, Pelia as well. And honestly, the nothing really didn't make a lot of sense. I know a lot of people are already complaining about Khan, Nuni, and Singh and how it's a big cannon breaking thing, but it's not. It's explained ish in the episode. And uh, we're going to get into that, I'm sure. But anyway, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I really enjoyed myself watching this one. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what you thought about it, though. This is an interesting one because it's it's it feels so cheap because on occasion yet so expensive because they go to places so full because of time stuff but so empty because all they do is walk around and talk for a while it's you know what I mean it's it's all of the things but because we like time stuff it feels full to us but then do we do anything but that's okay because it's big time stuff so I'm 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 processing I'm still in processing stage to it yeah um I mean. I, I, I mean, obviously, the, the, the T-cars, the trans century stuff, was was glorious. I certainly wish they'd handed a tricorder over. That would have obviously made it a lot easier, but that would have been creme de la creme of, like, well, yeah, tricorder or a phaser. Even if it stopped working as soon as they got there, right? That would have been a step to the to the nth degree, um, which would have been nice, but that's okay. And I just want to quite... clarify. I just want to jump in real quick. T-cars is the future temporal uh, yes. L cars display. Thank you. Just so the people know, because they might have missed what you said there yes. or not. Temporal L cars or yes, time travel. Cars. Yes, uh, and I like. I did like the fact that they handed him a, a very sixty star crap prop, like like a you know something you're not going <laughs> to yeah. think is a dangerous. But just straight out of the sixties, they would absolutely give that to a, a very time. TOS. Exactly right, right. Consider this is our first actual renew actual Kirk. It isn't because he's an alternate again. So that's a clever way of having him only be an alternate for the most part, which is fun. But he was way more James T. Kirk in this one. I saw a little hints of Shatner with his uh, the way he was talking to Lon and just kind of having fun with the role. Uh, this felt way more like Kirk than his previous outing, in my opinion. I'd say it didn't feel like Shatner, but it felt more like a version of Kirk. I got hints of Shatner, though. There, there were definitely some scenes that kind of had that, so... I think as an overall as an overall performance, it wasn't it wasn't Pine, it wasn't Shatner. I mean, I think unlike Pine, who you might only play Kirk for you know in total two hours and twenty minutes if you take all the scenes you're not in, right? That's such a small amount of time. 
if if they if they think they're going this, the distance of four, five, six, seven seasons, whatever, this guy's their committed Kirk, so they need to lead him in slow and steady and do it properly, right? So this makes loads of sense from that. It's kind of nice that his first full episode as a Enterprise captain, he gets the girl. There's something oddly thematic about that that fits, and it is it's a it it doesn't flow until it does flow, and then it's like damn, that makes so much sense from Lan's point of view. That I thought was nice. It leads you on the the tropey tr- the tropey train, and then it reverses it and makes you appreciate it. And then Lan crying at the end was really powerful because you don't appreciate her life until she spells out for you, and that was really nice. It was you know nice. Um, if you had pitched this to someone, right? Let's have Laan go and meet Khan in the past, huh? Like it sounds it sounds silly and really hard to achieve. They did a pretty damn good job of it, considering it could easily be this or this or this. So I think for that part, it. it it, is it safe? I don't know. But they did a lot of good stuff, and that's really important for this sort of... Very- they did, but the one thing that annoyed me about Kirk, which they could have easily fixed, is give him the proper sideburns. Yeah. He's got regular sideburns. All it takes is just a little... And we get the angle. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought he was much better as Kirk in this one, and I love the I love Lahan in this one. This was a very solid episode for me, and um, I really appreciate Lahan. Union sing a lot more now, for sure. I love how he's like, oh my God, this is New York, mid 20th century. And it's like, I was like, oh, face palming at that point. It says Toronto's Eaton Center and uh, the Ryerson University. And I love how he just points it out because everybody assumes it's New York because that's where everything takes place. And it's like, no, 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 no. Um, uh, the, has it always been this cold on Earth? It is actually not bad for Canada, but it will get colder when it gets dark. I love that too. Sorry, this was... This has my Canadian maple syrup blood flowing. I love it. They did certainly play on the idea of and uh, Kirk was dumb. I mean, they played that up a bit too much because he's a captain of Enterprise. He's not dumb. Like that was too far, probably. But he also did. He also did solve a lot of the problems himself. Like Laan was oddly the middle value. She was both solving and also getting to problems, and he was both being an idiot and solving problems. So it was an interesting balance they both had. But he also kind of explained that, where it's like, I, I'm better off doing nothing because this is going to be so much better. Um, yeah, which you never hear them say that. That was nice, especially because they never had temporal, proper temporal courses because that was no Federation. So it makes sense he's not as well equipped to deal with time stuff. But also, he's never been to Earth. And I love I loved the parallel that he can't drive. What do we get? First scene of 09, that alternate timeline of him absolutely drives a you know his first scene is stealing a car so I, and that you know the feeling of those two scenes is is tv versus movie but it's nice to see you know yeah if you're not if you're born in space on ships you aren't going to know these things so i thought that it most of the things he was done about worked because he's not you know he's never been on a planet looking at signs in english the, the best thing about it for me honestly was he was born on the uss iowa um and his driving was very reminiscent of his driving in a piece of the action where he like backs into the other car first and then he like, uh, so that that was great too. They kind of- There was a lot of very subtle callbacks of previous Kirk things that were not just, here's a thing. Like you say, lots of very, very small things that were very nice. They were intelligently written, I thought. Even though, even the revolving door thing, I'm from outer space. It's like when we heard that in the trailer, it's like, no, you were, you're from Iowa. You only work in outer space. Um, but but he's literally from outer space. So, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was fun. Um, and even little things, you know, how they how they steal a thing, not steal a thing, that they did a moral way, as it were. My problem, one of my problems, is that the without the Federation existing, the the Enterprise wouldn't exist in the exact form that it was, because it took the, the Vulcans, Tellurite, and the Andorian technologies to come up with that stuff. Considering Earth got devastated, where did they build this stuff? Yes, we got lunar underground colonies that he said, and Mars and Venus and Europa. That's where they're living. But it doesn't make sense that technology would all be the same. Not that we saw the Enterprise from the outside after the time change. However, everything else was the same. And that kind of bugged me a little bit because that would not be the case at all. I mean, yes, the Enterprise as well. Why would all the Enterprise crew be honest, Enterprise, Enterprise, if they're all their lives would change, their parents' lives would change? They wouldn't be, right? They just wouldn't. So Spock wasn't. <clears throat> Spark wasn't, yeah. Common conceit. Yeah, I mean, it was nice they did the different badges. That was a nice... I mean, that was them spending money on budget. Making Honey costumes for one scene is, is not worth it, obviously. But I, they certainly should have changed the computer displays to be a different ship. 
Well, they did that... change them. They were the Discovery. Se- they were just the Disco Prize displays. They were all blue. They weren't the same color as Pikes. But I mean the, the actual, the actual sh- shape. Because then they could have said, "Oh, it's the same bridge module." Eh, eh, eh. But that would have been a different. Because they didn't like. They said no exteriors. But that's neither here nor there. They're, so they kind of did that a little bit with the blue displays, though. Yeah, I was expecting a little bit more of a radical shift in the Enterprise bridge because they could have done anything with it. They could have, if they're at war, they could have done. I know it's Kirk, and we haven't had temporal stuff yet. But you don't throw them in a trash bin. Advanced fabrics. That was a that was a big problem I had because you wouldn't do that. You just you just wouldn't. End of like a future pretty short... textiles, future alloys for the bad, and two different yeah. ones too, because they'd be made different points in different universes. Two different temporal signatures. Neither match up to this earth fully. Uh, that was odd. I don't think Kirk did that in, uh, you know, so they of forever. I think they kept them. Another, I, I expected when they were talking about tricorder as well to have some kind of line about, you know, bear skins and whatever um, for the, the permi- permi- primitiveness of having to build one. But that was cool. That was cool tying into Pelia, though, and at the beginning of the episode a little bit. I mean, as, as soon as I saw the, the the pictures from, you know, this one's the time trial one, I'm thinking, of course, they introduced Pelia just to use her in this episode, right? That, why else would you make her that old? So structurally, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't show a gun in the first scene and then fire it in the, the third scene. It's like, oh, there's no real satisfying payoff there. That said, they did not fall into the ever for always trap of long time human alien person on earth vibe, which was they know everything. They've got tech, they've got a ship. She wasn't the same character, radically. That was really satisfying, actually, as a twist, because growth. You know, these aren't... Clearly, she's not special. She's just someone who happens to live longer. Refugees happen to be put on Earth. And then her family... I mean, she clearly, she grew up on Earth. She's never had space travel. She's never had tech of any kind. She's surprised by things. I mean, presumably, like, you know, 10 generations ago, her family came here. She knows that she's an alien, but she doesn't know anything works. She's never, you know... Not all the descendants, as long as it's dead, that could explain anything. So she's, she's entirely humanized, but can live forever. So that was really nice, I thought. Laon basically said, you're better engineering, you think, which leads her to her engineering path in the future, I guess. So it's Laon's words that maybe did that. But it was funny. Like, it, was, it, was a, it was a nice twist on... Um, I was certainly expecting, obviously, in the last scene, her to walk in and say, Ooh, I, I, I saw you a hundred years ago. And you'd... But obviously, they did not make it clear if the timeline... If it's reset, reset. If it happened, happened. If it stopped, it stopped. And there's different ways of looking at the things with time cops because they can actually cover their tracks. They could stop it. That's a net relativity. They went back and once they fixed the, the cause and effect problem, they could go back and stop the first cause before the cause and effect. So that would stop the uniforms from being in the garbage can. That would stop them from being in the past, etc. Happy to do, not a problem, when time cops are involved because they actually control time stuff. It's not random a la other episodes. But also she could be saying, oh, no, I'm in trouble. Like, here's security. And also and also, she would recognize the outfit conceptually. Like, that's a human, you know, she... Ca- so that there's the... I was surprised there was no scene. That said, happy we got a time cop scene versus a Pelia scene at the end. Way more satisfying. <laughs> Although I was certainly hoping for a, a, a full uniform or a badge or something a bit more, you know, um, literal. You know, would have been nice again if she had pulled this out and scanned it on and said, okay, you're in temporal state. You're in, you know, would have been nice. We know these exist. You can get them. Um, would have been nice, but that's okay. I actually thought we were going to see Duquesne for a second. We saw some guy from the, the top who looked a lot like Duquesne. Then we saw him scan his hand and go in. That would have been awesome. And that shot of him from the top looked very much like Duquesne, I got to say. so Didn't even think I, don't know if- I love that as an idea. So anyway, yeah, when you go back and watch it again, look at that look at that shot of him from the top. It looks like the same actor. Like, I really thought they were going to bring him in, and I was like, yes. Oh, awesome. If I had thought that, I'd be so disappointed by the end. First, is it Wow, happy? sorry for ruining it for you. No, no, I'm, I'm glad I well, didn't think that. But that, I mean, that would have been the ballsiest reveal, given he just came back as not him a year, you know, six months ago. Oh, that would have been so good, though. And then you wouldn't need the uniform because it's just the same guy. Not a problem. Also, the Romulan ship that they showed, we got we to gotta talk about that at some point because that looked different than like the Picard uh, ship, more TOS-like. And uh, yeah, I, I got just, we got a quick glimpse of it. I thought they'd focus on it more. Um, so I kind of just brushed it aside for a second. And then by the end of the episode, I'm like, damn, we didn't see it again. Um, we got to analyze that picture in, in some detail at some point, so... You know, all the temporal Cold War stuff leads to questions. Of course, it's giant time stuff. But, you know, clearly she's part of the future Romulan and time war things. 
But then it's interesting that it's in the 29th century people who are solving it ish. But they're before the Time Wars, but they'd obviously have to know about the Time Wars because it's Time Wars. But then they're not, they're pre 31st second, 31st century, who obviously have already ignored time travel. Which in fact, Stuart, obviously you've got, you've got to look at Discovery going to the future beyond the timeline. Just the fact they changed the timeline today showed that you can do that. But people, people, some people in our fan base said, oh, well, in Discovery Season 3, they say no more time travel, which means no, never time travel, which undoes the time cops. But they just use, there they are. So that shows us that all this stuff still happens. It's fine. Like we can still do time cop stories. They still exist. They still function. At a certain point, they might turn the turn the turn the back on it. But that's all. Yes, good good stuff. But yeah, Duquesne would have been really nice. That would have been that would have been very snazzy. I really Oof. thought you were gonna get him. He looked exactly like him. But that but that didn't make sense for him to be in the past though. Like that that's evil Duquesne, right? That's that's him bombing buildings. So that that. But at the end, it would have been great versus at the start, or or even you know some someone else called Braxton. You know, hello, I'm I'm you know if a lady's I'm Matilda Braxton. Like, okay, and we're like, oh nice, Braxton's daughter, mother, whatever. That would have been fun. Unnecessary. Oh, she could have been. We don't know, right? It's, it's just unnamed temporal person. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, good to mm. see some snow. We got some snow in the chase scene. We also got lots of construction at all of Toronto. That was awesome as well. Um, it made me laugh. I'm sorry, but uh... well, I mean, I got to commend them though that this was height height of the pandemic. Nope, I was expecting to see constant shots of people in masks in the deep background. You can in the press photos. I was half looking, and it's not exactly subtle if you cover it. Like that's a giant thing to have, and it you know, every extra you see in every single scene has to be someone who's actually a film set person, which you've never normally have. Normally, in these sets, you have a like 20, 30 people waiting to actually fill the foreground, and the background is just people. But everyone had to be actually approved, because, you know, rules. So that was really well done. And I was kind of hoping they weren't going to go biological weapon and go pandemic, like, oh, it's 2023, COVID was a bioweapon by the Romulans. It's like, yeah, no, don't do that. Although it wasn't, it was just year. It wasn't specifically our year. Um, which was good. Again, confusion, right? Vagueness. Yeah. I wonder how much money he won during the chess games, though, because that was a nice hotel room, and you can't secure you can't secure a hotel room like that without a credit card. So they must add a huge amount to bribe if they want to bribe border guards and the hotel staff. Yep. I'm sorry, but the money thing threw me well, for a bit of a loop. Well, look, in his timeline, they do make the Ferengi, and he's done the rules of acquisition, and so he knows that greed is good, so he knows how to get... He, he can make money and, and make plumic, plumic soup for La'an at the same time. In a toilet. That was good. A good Vulcan. I mean, again, really nice little references. You know, very TOS approach to, to little things. It was nice. I mean, the chess, you know, you don't, you don't associate Kirk with chess. That's his first scene. So that is actually very... It doesn't feel into... Oh, actually, yeah. And so, yeah, really clever little, um, you know, really, really clever little things. that They, they looked at the entire pantheon of the Kirk character and pulled stuff they wouldn't necessarily expect. So that was that was nice. That was that was smart. And the two-dimensional was basically just chess yeah. for idiots. Yeah. No, it's good. It was, it was smart. And uh, let's talk about the, the elephant in the room, Khan. Um, it is stated that, you know, she's been there for 30 years but she doesn't seem old enough to be... Well, she's a Romulan, though, so it's fine. Um, still not used to the ears. Somebody already mentioned to me before I saw this episode that there's a really canon-breaking thing that you're going to be annoyed with. And I assume they're talking about the Khan being a kid in this era. We don't know what year this is, first of all. And they did they did mention that he was supposed to establish power in 1992, meaning it's in the past. Um, and here he is a kid. But he, they all, he, she also went on to say, you know, we've been around, they've been... To, delaying things that inevitably happen like time will find a way to fix to have things happen that has to happen mm -hmm. um and she uses her gun and points to this the con sign as, while she's saying that so it's very subtle but she is saying that yes con's a kid now but he's still going to do what he has to what he's going to do it's just going to be delayed so it doesn't it, it does kind of break the prime timeline because he's supposed to be shipped off of the planet in the botany bay in 1996 but Mm. Uh, it, they it kind of addressed it and kind of didn't. 
I don't know about you, but when I thought the twist personally was going to be they get into the Toronto building and they find the Botany Bay and landing site, and that was the fusion reactor. Oh, I didn't. I didn't think that. That would have been cool. Like entirely unchanged. Like 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 shockingly the same. And be like, oh, cool. Like that would have been such a mind f, right? Yeah. I thought that would have been a fun twist. Um, which you know, they find kind of the same. They kind of do that, just not with the ship. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it, and with discovery, right? You know, going to the future, sort making this weird alternate future. All this, it, it's all very complicated. Enterprise being changed, etc. So to have them, what more annoys me is that they in this version of this thing in this story, they say future Romans have gone back and effed up Earth lots and lots of times. That annoys me more than anything else because that means that, you know, that's canon. But it's like, well, but it. But why wouldn't the time cops change it? That's the that's their why they're allowing these small things to go wrong. They the uh, although the, although in fairness, this is a very 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 strong caveat. She's said to be sort of insane in the first scene, so they actively make a note of don't necessarily trust everything she's saying. So you can't take what she says as gospel because why would a future Romulan person, not knowing what's happening, tell them all of this? So I don't. You can't really take that as gospel except this event. So that was kind of a good way of you know, like I said, you can argue this stuff. It wasn't this solid in the line, which is which is really smart for a, a thing something this giant, right? Um, but I mean, you know, we know things have changed, we know things have moved. It makes sense as there's there's variation slots the timeline etc. I mean even Voyager went back and it's confusing etc. So it's it's a reasonably good way of explaining it, and obviously Picard introduced Khan that was 2025, but the file this is 1996 when they pulled out the file on that in that other drawer. Now the thing is, this could establish that this is the disco timeline and a slightly different than the prime timeline, not by much. That's true. But that could be the, the one of the caveats here. So because we know Picard is real because they've got the entire TNG cast. Like we know that's the yeah, real the timeline. Only, the only outlier in Picard is that looking up and seeing that strange new yeah, world. season, season three. We know season. We know season three is real, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and yeah, if that, if that well, I and mean, I guess then season two. But season two, then the Khan thing said, yeah, if it's not whatever. Hmm. There's a lot of time shows. shenanigans going on. A lot of subtle changes. The butterfly effect. effect. On like ultra little things. So there you go. Even though time cops literally there just to change it and stop it, which they've really said they can do. I know. <laughs> um, and of but course, the, but in this in this disco universe, this is what's supposed to happen. Like this, it's fine. Yeah. But what's funny is that you know the time agent has a box that makes her immune to timeline changes, and the box can time travel. Because if the timeline changes, there's no more time ships. Of course, there is time ships because they also have boxes, but in ship form. Why in season two of Picard is the argument made the future time cops don't exist when clearly they have time negation tech? Lan uses it to save the timeline again. So of course there are time cops who can go back and stop it and help in season two of Picard. You can't say, oh, the timeline change erased everything. It doesn't. It can't. Like that guy, <laughs> the guy who was in this fight did not get erased. You know? Like Laan was still in the past when the timeline changed. So there are th so and you know and the um and the watch etc still existing time echoes are a thing it's it's important so there's yeah it's funny when two shows don't don't connect would have been kind of fun if they'd had in some small way uh, logic wise but um I mean I'm open to being pushed later I I still kind of like the 90s being the Genesis War but it was really interesting to see a you know an Indian good good young Khan played just minimalist enough. And I appreciated he had a classroom of people because he wasn't the one born to rule. He was the one that rose to rule. That's an important story plot. He's He was just a kid and everything that happened to him led him into this person. Um, so that I thought was actually pretty well handled considering. Um, yeah. Yeah. One more thing. Um, but the, at the beginning when she's like taking out of frustrations with that manga, um, He's showing off his martial arts skill, which is great. <clears throat> he uses some Aikido to use her force against her to get her on the floor. I thought that was going to be, I thought that was foreshadowing something that was going to be very important in the end. And it kind of is. I didn't notice it in the fight with the Romulan lady. I wish she would have made a point of saying, like, I just use your own momentum against you or your own force against you to kind of echo back to that. Um, I think she might have done that. I need to rewatch the fight scene. But um, I thought that was going to be something more important than it was. Um, 
Uh, well, I do appreciate in that fight, as you mentioned with the Roman, um, Lan's way weaker than her to the point of loot. Like it, it, it plays really correctly that of course the Roman just is just twice her strength, not even an issue. Yes, she gets a few ouch punches, but just physically she's not even like that. Was nice how overpowered she was in seconds. That was actually pretty fun. Um, and also the the I quite like in films when they show that conceit of, you know. When a guard comes down a, 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 a thing to stop you, they always say freeze. But if you shoot them first, before they can... Like, their training is not to kill you first. Like, I, it's a small note, but I like that in movies when the baddie, for being truly evil, wins in a situation because they aren't filtered by the freeze! Yeah. Uh, or, or, like, or the try me with the alarms. Yes, I mean, okay. that was a good... I mean, it made <laughs> oh, sense shit. as soon as he was yeah. shot. Like, oh, of course he, he can die. Of course he can. But it's like, oh, yeah. What a nice twist on that as well. Lots of little twists. Um, and the, the temporal agents care nothing for people's mental health. There's no mental health. They, they should have erased her memory or something. And that's the other thing. At the end where she contacts Lieutenant Kirk, that was kind of nice. Make sure he was born in Iowa and all that jazz. My, he was, and this is a small little nitpick, but was, I'm sure somebody didn't mention it, so I might as well. Uh, he was wearing the, the Enterprise Delta. I wish he had a different one on. Not the one that he was wearing in the alternate reality, but just another one for like another ship would have been kind of neat. But I mean, as we know, both. I know. Are... Yeah. The only thing I thought with that is that, boy, he was available. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Right I mean, away. Jesus. One, oh. one. You know, hey. Getting called by random security chief on another ship a thousand light years away. That was weird. I mean, well, it's his brother's ship. I love how he's like, well, no, what did Sam yeah, yeah. do now? I wish, yeah, that was, that was yeah, that was nice, and the George Kirk thing was great. Like that all being yes, not, explained, not, not yeah. glossed over, but allowed to have fun with the fact they've glossed over it by making fun of it, but in a real way, it was all good. Um, the only thing I thought about that was thank the living bejeebus it wasn't a real time hologram, because if this was Discovery. She would have called him. He would have appeared in her room, and he would have sat on the bed and talked to her for ten minutes and say, "I'm currently in 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 in, in the Pegasus Galaxy. I'm doing real time across the universe." No, and it worked better on a pad. It makes it flat. It makes it. It makes it more like like oddly intimate because it's right there. You're you're staring at it. it it's, you know, other versus just a person who's here. Like like when you do a FaceTime, you're so focused on the screen. It's so like you're trying to pull it in, take it in, and feel. It's, there's a certain intimacy to that versus just oh, you're next to me, right? Like it works better. So I was happy to see that, but he should not have been free. Or should have been the shower, or like, so, although, okay, good reference, Sonic Showers beats, you know, real water beats Sonic Shower. Nice, good, smart. Lots of nice little touches. That was good. I just wish I went a little bit further on the on the 29th century stuff. Especially with the LED wall. They could have had one shot of someone in the bridge. They could have. Would have been that easy. Would have been that easy, but that's fine. Vague is also probably very smart. I'm glad they, yeah, just to close out, I'm glad they mentioned Poutine twice and, you know, pointing out how good Delicious. it was. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on that note, guys, let us know in the comments section if you like Poutine or Poutine. Exactly. Um, but comment down below what you thought about this episode. Anything you want to talk about, please be sure to join us for a live later today. Where we will be discussing this in greater detail. But we'll be, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, make sure you're notified, do all the things you need to do. And like I said, come back and join us for the live where you can actually talk to us. And if you have anything you want to say about this episode, if you have any problems with the time travel stuff, mm. let us know. And if you think you've had any timeline issues yourself, then join in and discuss with us. And, and we'll see how we can help fix your universe for you. We can do it's it. It's all part of the Trek God service, eh? It is. And how can we afford such temporal, mechanical, trickery technology? Well, Patreon, Stuart, and join in the channel. And These playing help chess. Playing chess helps. Well, you, I mean, you could go to that Toronto lake and do it, I guess. Then perfect. I'll do that right down by the waterfront. I'll do there it. There you go. Or Patreon, like I said, or join the channel, or one time donation. Track it to hotmail.com is the PayPal or super chatting on a live, super thanks on a video, buying a shirt super down below. On this one. Um, or, you know, going back in time, putting money into Apple, getting some stocks, going forward in time, giving us a million would, would be great. I like the time travel reference there. That's good. Thank you. All right. So until next time. Time. Anyway, <laughs> he is Commander Cockings. He's got a funny. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.